Mother's Day. Today I have for you the top five reasons you know you're a mom. Here we go. Number five, when spit is your number one cleaning agent. Number four, when your feet stick to the kitchen floor and you don't even care. Number three, your favorite television show is a cartoon. You're a mom. Number two, your baby's pacifier falls on the floor. You give it back to him after you suck the dirt off of it. That's a mom. And number one, you're so desperate for adult conversation that the telemarketer ends up hanging up on you. That's how you know you're a mom. <laughs> Glad you're out with us this morning. I have a quote here from uh, Milton Berle. Milton Berle said, if evolution is true and really works, then how come moms only have two hands? Hmm? Think of that one. I don't have a message. I got late notice. So I'm just doing, jo- I'm doing these all day. <laughs> Sorry. It's not my fault. Uh, and if you check uh, down at Sheets, they, they have the sign up here. It says, um, free rose for mothers with gas. So <laughs> if you get down there today, <laughs> that's bad. That was, yeah, let's pray and go home, huh? <laughs> now, last one, a little, uh, story of a little boy. Little boy's very excited uh, every day when he went to school, he, he said to his teacher, he said, um, uh, my little brother's coming. I'm getting a little brother. And he comes in the next day for two weeks solid. Every day he gets in. He goes, my, my, little, brother's, my little brother's coming in. It got really close. And, and the mom called Billy over. And he said, come here, Billy. She said, put your hand right there. And he put his hand and the old foot moved. And his eyes got about that big. And he just, he just walked away. And... Uh, the next day, went to school and didn't say nothing. And the next day, and the next day, and for about two weeks, he didn't say a word. And so the uh, teacher said, Billy, what's up with your, your little brother here? I haven't heard you say anything about it. And, and his, he got tears in his eyes and he said, My mom ate him. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> We're glad that you're here this morning. <laughs> All those of you who are online and are about to shut it off, <laughs> whatever. We're going to take a look at moms and how, how did this whole thing start? How did this, this whole idea of mom, um, we know that uh, we go back to the beginning and, and uh, God created Adam and truly the word, the Hebrew word, you think everything I say now is going to be a lie, huh? Or, uh, but the, the word is isha. And, and so he created Adam, and it was uh, Isha. And then Adam, uh, he, you know, he said that he needs a, a helpmate here, and, and a woman was Isha. And so Ish and Isha, and, and it's whoa, man. And it was when Adam saw her, and he was like, whoa, man. That's how we got woman. It's Hebrew. Come on. I'm giving you some deep stuff here. She was the mother of all. She was the mother of all. You think when Adam saw her, it was the first woman he ever seen. But uh, she was the mother of all. And, and we uh, see in Proverbs 31, 30, it says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. But shouldn't that be written in every high school? Huh? And where we're, we're just looking and we're looking superficially and everybody's this and that. And boy, I wish she was my girlfriend and I wish this and that. And, and, and it's like, no, 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 no. All that's fleeting. All that's fleeting. Look at me. All that's fleeting. Charm is deceitful, beauty passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Well, this morning we're going to focus on some traits of a biblical mom and her name is Mary. The mother of Jesus. And what an exciting woman to take a look at today. And arguably the most intriguing woman in the Bible. Uh, Mary, being the mother of Jesus, she was not perfect. She was not sinless. 
but she was a great example of a godly woman and a great example of a godly mom, and, and that was Mary. So we're going to take, and now we're going to consider four things about Mary as we go through the message today. First thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to consider Mary's character, Mary's character. So I want to read to you Luke 1, 26 through 28. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel uh, was sent to God, or excuse me, was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth uh, to a virgin, virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among woman, women. So we see here that uh, he says to her, he says, Rejoice, highly favored woman. This was a 13 or 14-year-old. And he says, You are highly favored. It means that she was full of grace. Now listen to this. He was talking about her daily life and how that was revealed. Her daily life, the character that she carried as a 13 or 14 year old was being revealed and it impressed the almighty God as he watched her, as he, he looked at her. He said, you're highly Favored. And what I want you to know, ladies, moms, God's watching. God's watching. He sees the inner. He sees what, what you're thinking. He, he knows how you're feeling about things. I saw a, a poster. I took a picture of it. And the, the sign said, my kids say I have a favorite. That's not true. I don't like any of them. <laughs> What's sad is, is that's true about some, some moms. God sees what's going on on your inside. <clears throat> she was an extremely humble lady. In Luke 148 says, for she said that uh, for he is regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will be called, call her blessed. She was humble, extremely humble young lady. Matthew 23, 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humble. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Do you hear that? It's not talking about weak of character, not talking about, you know, we, it's talking about just being a humble, humble person. A lot of you know that uh, years ago, um, when I got out of high school, I went to work at Proctor Silex, and I made toaster ovens. Oh. I made coffee pots. Occasionally, I made a juicer. You probably owned one that I made. If it broke right away, I made it. I made it. You got it. And I remember going in there as an 18-year-old, and, and I, I went in, and, and I'm like, oh, man, this is unbelievable. I'm going to be making $3.25 an hour. Listen, I used to make 50 cents a kid to babysit. 325, that's like a triple upgrade or whatever. I'm not good at math. But I'm going to make three and a quarter an hour. This is great. And so they, they marched me back to a subline. Oh, what's a subline? I don't care. I just want to go there. I just want to go there. And they introduced me, the, the, the uh, supervisor introduced me to Maggie. Oh, who's Maggie? Well, you're going to be working with Maggie. I was like, hi, Maggie. I was so excited. It was my first day at work. And she looked at me and she said, I want to tell you right now, if you get on my nerves, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. If you get on, the only other, other person I've ever heard that say was my mother. <laughs> Man, alive. This woman was somebody's mom. You get on my nerves, I will punch you right in the face. <laughs> I stayed clear of Maggie quite a bit. She was very, Mary was a very humble person in her life. She was very strong in faith. I want to read uh, Luke 1, verse 49 through 55. And we read some of this. And, and this is what Mary said. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. 
He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones uh, and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Mary was extremely strong in faith. She was extremely strong in faith. She was poor. We, we uh, see in Luke chapter 2, verse 24, is that um, she, she comes and she brings two pigeons for sacrifice. Poor, poor. But she was strong in her faith and character. And God doesn't look at your wallet. He looks at your faith. He looks at your character. And that's what amounts to something in life. The world might not tell you that today. But to God, it's everything. And this little 13 or 14-year-old woman was, was chosen to be the mother of God, to be the mother of Jesus Christ, godly woman. Do you know, she's not in here right now, do you know, uh, I see a godly woman every single day of my life. Every single day, I see a godly woman who loves the Lord. And I go home and tell Terry about her. <laughs> it's my wife. I get up every morning and I see a, a woman praying. I see a woman reading her Bible Every single day. I see her weeping for our kids. I see a godly woman every single day of my life. Your bun's finished. Whoever's cooking that one back here. <laughs> what a wonderful thing. There is nothing, nothing, nothing better. Abraham Lincoln said... I regard no man poor who has a godly mother. Abraham Lincoln. And is that not the truth? The second thing we want to consider is Mary's courage. Luke 1, 30 through 38. This is a long text here. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and he shall, uh, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give uh, him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is uh, to be born will be called the son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Wow. What courage! What courage. Do you know who my favorite character in, in uh, Wizard of Oz is? A lion. Courage. Because he reminds me of me. Because whenever I was on the wrestling team, I always wanted to look tough. <laughs> I'll fight him with my eyes. I'll fight him with my eyes. But then whenever somebody stepped out, I'm like, <laughs> courage. Can you imagine the courage of this young woman? Mary, Mary said, I'm your maidservant. I will do whatever you want according to your word. I'll do whatever it takes to honor you, God, even to the point of public scrutiny, it took tremendous courage to be the mother of Jesus. 
It takes tremendous courage to be a mom today, to be a wife today. It takes tremendous courage to do that. But she was willing to take whatever came her way in order to stand up for Christ. You know, it's hard, it's hard to birth a baby. <laughs> I had three. Ask me about it. It's hard. Do you know what I did during the birth of my three daughters? There was no, ladies, there was no birthing room. There was this room with needles and all kinds of stuff in it. And, and they dressed me up in a, a blue suit. I had a big blue hat on. I had a blue uh, whatever, and I had blue things on my feet. You know, I looked like Bozo the Clown standing in there. And my first child's coming. And I snuck in a 110 camera. Snuck it in. And so Terry was, was having the baby, and it got a little intense, and I got a little sick, and then I got a little dizzy. So I backed off a bit because I thought he could handle it. And, uh, and I was standing there. Well, then she had the, the, the baby, and I was like, Whew. I pulled that 110 out. I'm breaking every rule in the Altoona Hospital. And I pulled that out, and I looked through. Well, did you ever look through a 110 camera? The, the view is like this much, you know. So I'm backing up in my little blue suit, and I fell into a bowl of something. <laughs> Dr. Grab later said that I was that close to being ejected from the birth of my children. <laughs> but listen, it's not hard to take a 110 picture of a baby. Birthing that baby is painful and difficult and listen to this and raising that baby is even more painful and difficult with all the goods with all the wonderfulness that goes along with it i want to tell you something it's even more difficult in the world that we live in the honorable judge mathis said you know who's raising uh, the kids, bringing them to church, working and getting a college education through night school. Not the one who fathered the child. It's the single mom. That's America. That's America. Moms. There's moms that are really doing it. They're really doing it. They're, they're out there. They're working hard. They've got great courage. Here's what, what Mary faced. She faced banishment. Matthew 119. Then uh, Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He could have easily had her removed from the situation, taken away, never to be seen again, and nobody would have questioned it. Her name would have been a bygone word because of the situation. At the word of Joseph, she faced banishment. She faced death. Deuteronomy 22, 23, and 24 if a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband and a man finds her in a city and lies with her, uh, then you shall bring them both out of the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death with stones. Wow. Be it unto me according to your word, Lord. Public scrutiny. Banishment. People wanting you dead. We look through the Bible and we see a lot of examples of, of strong ladies, Esther, Ruth, Rahab. But Mary stands out. Mary stands out being the mother of Jesus. We can even look to uh, 1 Timothy here. I just want to read a verse to you out of 1 Timothy. Or excuse me, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1.5 says, When I called in remembrance... Uh, the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelled first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother uh, Eunice. And I am persuaded that it is in you. Wow. Timothy. You know what uh, Timothy's grandmother did? She drug him to Awana. <laughs> she drug him to Awana. You're going to run around in that circle, boy. I don't care. You're going to do it. You're knocking that pin down. The faithfulness of mom, of grandma. It's important. 
Faithfulness means they stuck with it. Faithfulness means that it was hard. It wasn't easy. But it's worth it, moms. Third thing we want to consider here is consider Mary's contemplation. I had to practice saying that word because I thought I'm going to say that wrong. Contemplation. Okay. And we see in Luke chapter 2, verses 19 and 51, it says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 54 says, uh, Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them, but his mother kept these things in her heart. She pondered them. The angel announces Jesus' birth, and she thought about those things. There were things that, that she had no clue. She didn't understand. She had no way of understanding and being unto me, Lord. I, I, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to follow you. We think we need to get all the answers. We think that God's not a good God if he don't show us uh, the answers to everything. We see that Mary stood and went, and she ponders it. She thought through these things. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Let your request uh, be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. She thought about him. She prayed about him. I'm a guy. We don't think. We don't think about nothing. Wow. <laughs> Somebody's Mother's Day's card might get revoked today. <laughs> but we don't. We don't. I'm so used to using a shoehorn for dental floss. It's, it's crazy. I got my foot in my mouth so much, and it's like, oh, man, why don't I step back and think uh, uh, about things? But Mary did. It works. It works. She desired wisdom that was not her own. Isn't that beautiful? Proverbs 2, 1 through 5 says, My son, if you receive my words and uh, treasure my commandments within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and if you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure... Then you will understand and fear the Lord and find knowledge in God. It's amazing because I'm the one who has the word pastor on my desk. Unless Michael's monkeying with me and he put some awful things on there. But, but you know, the one who's always always thinking and pondering and interceding for our children and our grandchildren. It's my wife. It's my wife. Last consideration here. Consider Mary's commitment. This is the most difficult one, I believe. John 19, 25 and 26 is uh, Jesus being crucified. And listen to what it says. It says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus... His mother. And his mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Who was standing at the foot of the cross? Mary. What had Mary just gone through? She watched her son tremendously beaten, the hair ripped out of his face, a crown of thorns pounded into his head, nails driven through his wrist, and lifted up on a post with everybody crying, come down if you're God. Can't God save himself? Being mocked. And at the foot of the cross was mom. Remembering holding the promised son of God in her arms. Nursing him and nurturing him. And watching him grow. And seeing him be the literal son of God. 
And she watched him go through all this and stood at the foot of that cross. She was a committed, committed mom. 1 Corinthians 5, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Mary stayed committed to her son all the way to the cross. Even though there was much confusion and nothing but sorrow and no future, literally, she stayed committed. Mom, stay committed. Stay committed to your kids, your grandkids, your marriages. Stay committed. But you don't know how hard it is, Pastor Lou. If you're a born-again believer, ask Mary how hard it was to stand at the foot of that cross. She was committed. I know for a lot of moms right now, it, it, it just seems like, What's going on? My family's being attacked and rocked at every angle. My hard work and efforts seem to go unappreciated. My marriage is a wreck. Hectic schedules, family pressures. You know, last night, we went to Sight and Sound. And uh, we're sitting in Sight and Sound, and I had heard it was David. And I had heard... Wait till you see Goliath. Wait till, uh, I know the story. Oh my God, I can't wait to see Goliath. And so I'm sitting there and I got my almond things and, you know, and my water and my cough drops and my tissues and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, uh, and, and then all of a sudden it gets to the point where, where they, and I'm hitting Terry. I didn't want her to be, fall asleep during this part. I'm like, listen, Goliath is coming. Look, oh man. And here's this enormous Goliath. And, and, and David's there. I'm like, oh, this is, this is so, I mean, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he comes out and he's taunting David. And how they did it, I don't know. David got a sling and he started going like this and it went into slow motion like Matrix. I was like, yeah, he's going to and he let loose that thing Boom. a giant hole in the giant's head and Goliath was like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he kept on doing that mm-hmm. and it got uncomfortable it got very uncomfortable. And, and David was standing on the stage and he went. He never fell. The curtain came down and they said, we are experiencing technical difficulties with the show. <laughs> Go to a show with me. He never fell. I'm like, what version of the Bible are they using? (laughs) This is incredible. And I think of moms. And with all that's going on. And they read and they pray. And boy, that giant's there. And it's like, God, we got this. We got this. (laughs) (laughs) And he just don't fall. (laughs) Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Listen, God will get you through. God will get you through. And you need to stay faithful. You need to stay strong in the Lord in spite of heartbreaking situations, in spite of disappointments, in, in spite of all that's going on. Do your very best. To be committed to your family, your marriage, your church. Be committed. Be a godly mom. The best thing that a mom can do 
for her family is be a born-again believer. Best thing you can do is know Christ as your Savior. Is to say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I'm trusting in you for my forgiveness. I believe that you died and were buried, that you rose again, that you shed your blood for my sins, and you're now at the right hand of the Father. And, I, and I'm yielding my life to you. Forgive my sins and save my soul. Come into my heart. That's the best thing you can do for your family. The second best thing you can do is teach your children that. Let them know what it means to be saved. There's no two greater things you can ever do, ever, in this life than have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and tell others about him, especially your children. That's the best gift that you can ever give them. Abraham Lincoln said, I remember my mother's prayers. They have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that even as a mom, you can go to your grave knowing that your prayers, your example, your godliness will follow your children. It'll follow them through their life. Let me close with, we're not going to sing it, but Esther Kerr uh, Rashoy penned the words back in 1941, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase, so bravely run the race till we see Christ. If you need to talk to somebody about what it means to be saved, to know Christ as your Savior, someone will meet you right out here at these back doors and talk to you. It's the number one thing. Moms, dads, everybody that's here, let's live God-honoring lives and watch what he can do 